welcome to York Right in Texas, episode two. I am Chance Chapman, and joining us today is Right Worshipful Dr. Jim Rumsey from the Committee on Work for the Grand Lodge of Texas, and also most illustrious Don Paul Payton, the most illustrious Grand Master, the most illustrious Grand Council in Texas. Hey, Chance, you also forgot uh, Jim is also the illustrious Grand Chaplain at the Grand Council World Slave. That's an appointment, not an elected. Hey, still do his job. <laughs> <clears throat> you would think uh, uh, the son of a past Grand Master of the Grand Lodge would know that protocol anyways. So then he would be illustrious, worshipful, right, worshipful doctor? I'm already lost. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> all right. With us tonight, we've got a couple of guests that's uh, good friends of all of ours. We have Gabriel Yagish, who is a the sitting junior warden of Fort Worth 148 and a past thrice illustrious master of Texas Council and a past high priest of Texas Council there in Fort Worth. And we also have Billy Jack Hamilton, who is the <laughs> sitting senior warden of Fort Worth 148 and the sitting high priest and thrice illustrious master of Texas chapter and council in Fort Worth also. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Thanks for having us on. It's a pleasure to switch hats. <laughs> yes. So in, instead of y'all busting us over uh, hard to answer questions, we've, we've got a couple of questions to ask y'all that's not written down here for y'all. So, oh, uh, fantastic. So surprises. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, we'll just kind of go to a couple of discussion questions here. So. Can you tell, both of you are both on the Grand Chapter, Grand Council, Internet Committee. Can you tell us exactly what the Internet Committee does? I'll sure. let the chairman go first. Um, we handle all the Internet communications for the Grand Chapter and the Grand Council. Uh, that includes building the web page, uh, creating the uh, Facebook feed, and uh, also any other kind of communications that get allowed. A lot of times we um, help with putting together uh, some of the draft for emails that go out, uh, as well as any of the uh, documents, uh, letterheads that are put together. You know, some of those already exist, but if they need to be created, then usually we jump in and help with those as well. Yeah, we, we pretty much handle anything and everything, digital, electronic, that kind of thing. So uh, it's kind of a big grab bag of uh, responsibilities and duties, uh, which involves many different learning curves all at once. Yeah, so essentially, we do whatever most illustrious Don Paul and most excellent uh, David ask us to do. So uh, pretty much. Uh, how long have you been on the Internet Committee? Since uh, December of 2018. No, to, since December of 2019. I don't know what year it is anymore. It's quarantine. Yeah, for me, I think it's been, geez, I, I think I was appointed to the committee in the summer of 2017. Yeah. Okay. And then I, uh, I was helping in kind of behind the scenes uh, in preparation for my appointment. I was, I was told, hey, uh, please help out with this. Get ready to help out. And so prior to being officially appointed, I did some work on behalf of Billy. And uh, then I officially joined the committee uh, during the last grand uh, assembly. Okay. Awesome. So with everything that's going on right now, what do you believe is the line that can't be crossed with the virtual practice of Freemasonry that is occurring with the present state of society? And is this something that we should continue when things go back to normal? Ooh. Dave, do you want to start that one? Sure. Um, I think that there are a number of things that we can't do, primarily degree work, right? There are, we just, there, there's no initiatic component to a digital degree, right? This is not some, you know, mail order Freemasonry that we want to be engaging in. And realistically, uh, we can't install people or obligate uh, people because I'm a big believer that there is an ontological component 
of the initiatic experience that fundamentally changes who you are and not being able to do that in person means you can't do it at all. However, there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do, which includes uh, education uh, and the Grandmaster himself has said that uh, as long as you're okay in terms of being Masonically secure, I can verify, hey, I'm the only person in this room. You know, you can communicate Masonically as appropriate uh, and you can even pay bills. So I think that going forwards past quarantine, I would really like to see a lot of the business side of stuff getting handled via either just conference call or a video conference where the off, you know, you get your, your, your lodge trustees or your council trustees or whatever you say, Hey, uh, we got to pay bills. You know, everybody knows what has to be paid and what we have to vote on. These are all the business essentials. Let's take care of that. And then meet in person for more, not to say more important, right? Because paying bills is important. And so is the actual running of an organization, but for the more involved stuff. So I don't know if I'm- I want to chime in for a minute. Uh, this is gonna shock everyone, but the committee I worked for the Grand Lodge this past weekend approved using zoom for ritual practice hey Boom. wow <laughs> that's, that's, that's big. That's you big. know i would actually venture to say that that was probably done under the radar <laughs> it's kind of nice to have uh actually a, a official endorsement for that um uh. So, Jim, does that mean I can renew my A certificate on Zoom? <laughs> that would not be ritual practice. <laughs> that would be ritual failure. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, I, it also, Gabe, I see uh, you do have one bad uh, omen there. You actually own Texas a and merchandise that's in your house. I do. I do because I, I, am, a, I am an Aggie. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. It's just what I do. <laughs> Evidently, at Texas a and they did not show you how to use a razor. No, this is my corn beard. That's what I'm calling it, the corn beard. Uh, I normally go for kind of a close-cropped beard, but I've decided that since uh, quarantine is going on and I don't have to go anywhere, I might as well do my best to look, at least from the eyes down, kind of a caveman. So the haircut is still non-negotiable. Going for the Rasputin look. Exactly. Uh, I, send, I send, me your, send me your Russian queens. I actually clean shaved about a week and a half ago, and I'm going to measure this quarantine in facial hair growth. There you go. Uh, so, so Jim, are there any um, requirements or uh, prerequisites to having the Zoom ritual practices, or is it just get on Zoom and go for it? Expand your question with more details. So do you have to have it set up with the password protection? Yes. Or can, okay. And then just post it in a, a large group on Facebook, or should you send it to only those that you know to be Master Masons? Or? Just like using so just like using a telephone. That, mm -hmm. That's how we compared it to. Uh, if you can make a secure phone call, and discuss ritual. There's no reason you can't make a secure video teleconference to discuss ritual. The secure is the key there. So yeah. what, uh, it all uh, comes down to use your best judgment. One of okay. the uh, events that Billy and I attended digitally not too long ago, it was actually uh, this uh, past Wednesday, uh, the organizer of the event said, hey, this is restricted to 32nd degree Scottish Rite Masons. And he says, two qualifications, I have to know you, right? And then even if I know you, I'm still going to get you to text me a picture of your current Scottish Rite dues card. And then from mm. there on out, you could send other people the link as long as you knew them. And they could ver you could verify either by sitting at a Scottish Rite stated meeting with them or from seeing their Scottish Rite dues card that they are Scottish Rite Mason. Um, so there are people kind of independently taking these um, uh, self-tiling uh, actions. So it, I'm glad to see that we are seeing uh, common sense being used. So you're telling me that as you as you are vouched for, you may vouch for others. Exactly. So novel, I, novel concept. <laughs> so I I also have to say, as 
you know, part of the internet committee to uh, the password you should use that for any meeting, not just those where you're going to be practicing ritual, because one of the big things that's popping up right now is zoom bombing to where people will enter in random numbers uh, and pop in on someone else's zoom meeting uh, and just troll the hell out of it. Uh, so if you're having any kind of meeting, it, it really does make sense to have some kind of password on there or else anybody can pop in uh, and just be a jackass. And you can choose the password that you want, correct? It's not just an automatic uh, password that's generated from mm -hmm. Zoom. Uh, there's either, you know, so it, it will have a auto-generated password or you can replace it with your own. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, since Billy and Gabe are our guests tonight, let's go ahead and have uh, Gabe and Billy give us your Masonic bio. Billy, you go first. All right. Um, so my Masonic bio is uh, I was initiated in Lawton, Oklahoma at Triangle Lodge number 548 back in 96. Uh, I became a Master Mason in Chandler Lodge number 34 in Arizona in 98. Um, I am currently Senior Warden for Fort Worth 148. Uh, as mentioned previously, I'm the current High Priest, Thrice Illustrious Master for Texas Chapter and Council. Uh, I am Chairman of the Internet Committee for the Grand Chapter of Royal Arch Masons of Texas, Grand Council of Royal Masons, and I'm a member of the Internet Committee for the Grand Commandery Knights Templar of Texas. Um, and then a couple of other uh, organizations that I also, uh, that both Gabe and I actually help with managing their websites, uh, such as the Texas York Rite Association, the Tarrant County York Rite Association. Um, I'm sorry, not Texas. Um, the Texas Allied Masonic Degrees Association uh, was what I meant to say. And so as for me, I was uh, initiated in July of 2016. I was passed in September and I uh, was raised in November. And then I lied to myself and I said that I would wait a year before getting involved in any appended bodies. And this is a lie because a year and a half after I was raised, I was serving as high priest of Texas chapter. So um, I, I am honored to be a past high priest and past TIM of Texas chapter and council respectively. I serve on the grand chapter in internet committee. I serve on the grand council internet committee and I am currently uh, honored to serve as the district deputy grand master of cryptic district 26 of the most illustrious grand council of Royal Select masters of Texas. I am the current Generalissimo of Worth Commandery, and um, I'm a member of a couple of other invitational bodies that Billy is in, and uh, oh yeah, and I'm Junior Warden of Fort Worth Lodge. I, I get so used to just saying that that uh, I blew over it, um, but yeah, I'm a very big believer in the York Rite as a holistic ap approach from Enter to Apprentice to uh, Order of the Temple inclusive, and so I... I'm very obnoxious about being the one of one of the York right guys. So one of those right. guys. Yeah, one of those guys. Well, I'm glad to see that both of you are getting involved in masonry. Uh, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself outside of masonry? What do you do when you're not going to lodge or studying or so forth? What is this when I'm not going to lodge that you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Billy, you go ahead. Sure, yeah. No, actually, uh, yeah, no, that's a valid point because on five nights out of any given week, I'm usually doing something Masonically uh, to the point to where my wife, when she or I get home from work because uh, she has like a rotating shift, she's like, what do you have going on tonight? <laughs> so it's not even, you know, what do you want for dinner or anything like that? It's like, where are you going? And what meeting do you have? Um, for work, I am a uh, data analyst and uh, in, in data architect for Kelly Mitchell, uh, you know, as a consultant for a large telecommunications company, which unfortunately I can't name due to the, the class of my contract. Uh, I recently retired-ish after 15 years from Verizon. Um, before that, I worked for AT&T, Intel, UPS Logistics, 
uh, really just a, a long history of doing IT. Uh, I never expected to go into IT. That was not my goal. My goal was to be a rock star, just like everyone else. Uh, so I had, I have had a couple of bands that have headlined, um, you know, shows in a couple of different states, uh, had CDs, even had radio play on uh, a couple of different radio stations. Uh, but eventually I had to wake up and realize IT is actually my career. So mm -hmm. other than that, I read, um, I play a lot of video games. Uh, Don Paul and I are usually just about every single night on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So if you're looking to play and maybe uh, work on your kill streaks, then uh, y'all should ask us for a gamer tax. And then as for myself, I work as a plumbing designer for an architectural firm um, and that's based in North Texas. Uh, prior to that, I worked for the oil and gas industry for five years, uh, four of which I was a reservoir engineer. And uh, I got a degree in petroleum engineering at a and and everything like that. I'm, I'm not using it at all. <laughs> so, um, but I do enjoy being uh, a plumbing designer. Uh, I have found that drawing and working with architects to produce uh, useful, pretty buildings is uh, very something I've turned out to be very passionate about. Uh, in my spare time, I enjoy reading. I like playing guitar and bass guitar, uh, composing music. Um, and I'm very passionate about volunteering and working with my church uh, when non-quarantine times physically allow. So, uh, and I, I enjoy uh, hanging out with my dogs and uh, tattoos and body art and that kind of stuff. All right. Well, let's kind of get back to the meat and potatoes here since we kind of know your background and everything. So what made you accept the appointment to the committee for the, what made you accept the uh, appointment for the internet committee for the grand chapter grand council? There's a choice. <laughs> I, know, I know both of you were not given a choice. It was. Uh... Uh, well, so for myself, actually, I was asked to help out uh, pretty early on. Um, you know, I had offered to, to help out with some of the updates on Facebook and, and stuff like that. And it just kind of evolved from there. Uh, yeah. And, and for me, what, what made me say, oh, hey, I, I got to take this opportunity was just that there was an opportunity to expand on the existing website structure. And uh, there was a chance to get involved with like, you know, the, the blood and guts of what, what makes our digital side work and it was a neat challenge and I was really excited to learn new stuff and that's Billy can attest to this for sure uh, both of us have been learning a lot of new skills or refreshing old skills in the process of working on the Grand Chapter Green Council websites so it's it's been a lot of fun and been very educational so I got the letter and I said hey that sounds really fun let's do it yeah, actually, that's a great point, right? The skills we've learned, uh, and we've had to take on a lot of new challenges in uh, helping to redesign the web page. Uh, the skills we learn actually add to our career bio as well as our Masonic bio. I know a lot of the time whenever I decided I wanted to put something on the Grand Council website, I'd call, call you and say, hey, I want to put this, this, and this, and this up there. And you're like, well, it's not as easy as just point and click. I said, well, do whatever you got to do. I don't know what we have to do, but make it happen. And y'all do a great job. So uh, without making everybody go to sleep here, uh, can you walk us through the development of the new Grand Chapter Grand Council website? All right. And so I, I put together a long list. I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible. Uh, essentially, there's several steps, right? You have to have the planning step where uh, DP, you let us know that you wanted to redesign the web page. So our first question to you is, well, what do you want? Right? So uh, we started doing that. Uh, we started looking at the existing website, doing an inventory, looking at the content, the structure, how the back end is. Uh, one thing I could say is actually the, a lot of the previous web page, we've kept the back end design. Uh, because when we first started working with it, um, it was mostly database driven. So most of the content you see 
on the web page is, is not actually HTML or PHP. It's not in the web page, it's in the database. Uh, and at first we're like, well, that's kind of wonky. You know, I'd never actually used a web page setup like that, but we found out that it was actually, it made things a lot easier. So kudos mm -hmm. to the previous website admins because uh, that's been a learning experience that it makes it much more flexible, right? Rather than having to change the, uh, the whole structure, we found how to work with the existing structure. And, uh, you know, it, it's actually reduced a lot of the coding we've had to do. Um, so that was step two, right? Doing an inventory of what we, what we had. Uh, and then we sat down with UDP and uh, we also talked with uh, most excellent David Baskin uh, separately and asked, what are your objectives? You know, here's what we have. What do you want to change? What new material do you want to add it to it? Uh, and then we broke it into a priority list, right? So on day one, what absolutely has to be there? What are must have priorities? Uh, we had a day seven list. What things that need to quickly follow but aren't necessary to have when we uh, roll out the, the brand new web page. Uh, and then we had a day 30 list, which is what are things we'd like to have but can wait a little while. Um, and then it was really the coding part. It's uh, the coding part. It's you know, when you have a good plan, it's really just sticking to the plan. Uh, it takes the most work, but it takes the least mental gymnastics, I guess, to, to go through it because it's really just coding. Okay. Well, then uh, I bet y'all could tell us why is the Internet Committee so important to grand bodies, whether it be grand chapter, grand council, grand commandery, grand lodge? Why is it so important? Uh, I would say that in this day and age, the vast majority of Masons get involved into a Masonic Lodge through some sort of digital presence, right? It's, it's not going to be, it, it used to be, and in many cases still is, hey, my dad was a Mason, my grandfather was a Mason, I want to get involved. But lots of guys get involved into Masonry with no background whatsoever, and they're just looking up, you know, they're, they're doing the exact same thing that I did. Masonic Lodge, Fort Worth, Texas, right? And that's what they're looking for. So you gotta have a web presence, right? So you, Masonic Lodge, Texas, you know, you want that to show the Grand Lodge, right? The website or, you know, whatever the most local website is. So that's, it, that's kind of a different objective than your Grand Body websites for your right. Because Lodge websites, Grand Lodge websites, you're trying to funnel guys in to masonry, period, right? You're, you don't care whether they're going York Rite, Scottish Rite, Trine, whatever. You just want to make sure that they can get involved in Freemasonry at some level and find out where their nearest lodge is. Now, Grand Chapter, Grand Council, Grand Commandery, Scottish Rite, whatever, those have a different objective in that you want to get Master Masons to join but a website for an appended body is not going to be the defining factor in what makes a master mason decide to pursue those avenues. It's going to be, hey, somebody told me about this resource that I could find on this grand body's website. Or, hey, I know that the petition for that grand body's constituent bodies is available on the website. Or, hey, um, I want to get involved in this. And I know that so-and-so from my lodge is involved in a Royal Arch chapter, but I don't know where that is, right? So it, there's already kind of a base level of interest. And instead of recruitment, it's much more informational for appended bodies. At least that's kind of my philosophy. Billy, what do you think? So the web page and Facebook page really should run hand in hand. Uh, it used to be, you know, 10, 20 years ago, the whole purpose of, well, 10, 15 years ago, the whole purpose of having a Facebook page was to drive traffic to your website. Now I think that's been reversed a little bit. The whole purpose of having a website is to drive traffic to your Facebook page because that's where all the social stuff is going to happen. Uh, but the website is still important for having uh, the functional aspects that you need to have on there, right? So if you need a form, 
uh, most of the time it's available on the website, right? So if you're a district deputy grandmaster and you're like, crap, I need to find a report, uh, guess what? You can go to the website and it's there. Uh, if you're a thrice illustrious master and you're looking for, you know, information as to um, really anything, right? So a new petition, that's on there. Uh, if you need like a, um, a statement, you know, showing that a member is in good standing, that's on there as well as the request form. Uh, the other important thing is the calendar. Uh, the calendar on the website, I think, is a little bit more robust than the one on the Facebook page uh, because it is a joint calendar that has all of the chapter and council events going on. Um, you know, and the great thing about it is because it's a Google calendar, it's pretty easy to add to your own calendar on your phone uh, or on your computer. So that way you can receive notices, you know, when these statewide events or, you know, if you have a local event, let us know. Uh, we can put it on there and make it easy for people to find it and set a reminder for themselves. So we all got various degrees of interest and various strengths. You both touched on this a little bit a while ago. Uh, you more than gay, Billy, but what made you choose uh, your your career path of information technology and whatnot, aside from just not being able to be a rock star? Oh, no, I'm still pretty broken up about not being a rock star. So, <laughs> uh, For me, um, it's my, so my degree uh, came after my career. It was, I was already probably 10 years since my career in IT before I actually got a degree in information technology. Um, like I said, it wasn't planned, but it's something I've always enjoyed. Uh, even when I was a little kid, I used to like tearing things apart, much to the chagrin of my parents, uh, and then putting them back together again, like speakers, headphones, um, you know, even stereo components, radios. Uh, I was, they, they probably hated the fact that I would actually tear them apart. And most of the time I'd be able to put them back together again. Uh, so that's really, for me, it was a formative thing. I've always had this interest in technology. Uh, and it turns out that I guess it was something that I was good at. So it wasn't planned, but it was something that I think was, was always an attraction for me. As for myself, uh, I also started out with some musical aspirations, but uh, I had a hand injury that uh, severed a couple of nerves in my hand, so I had to kind of give that up. <laughs> well, I was a teenager when I did that. I accidentally shoved a knife into my hand when I was in the kitchen, and so I had to relearn how to play guitar, and uh, to this day, I still can't grip certain chords correctly. Uh, but no, uh, my dad was an engineer. Uh, he is now retired, and but he was a chemical engineer for years and years and years. And he wanted me to become a chemical engineer so bad. And I'm so bad at chemistry. It's it's not even funny, you know. So I I went and uh, did a couple of pros prospective student tours at different universities. And uh, at A and M, I found out about how they have the different freshmen grouped for the different engineering degrees. And the chemical engineering kids and the petroleum engineering kids are both grouped together in the same freshman engineering track. And so I said, well, I didn't know that this existed. I'm gonna go become a petroleum engineer because they make lots of money. <laughs> Super easy decision. And uh, had five great years in the oil and gas industry. Uh, you know, then, Things got kind of crazy for a little while. The company I was working for got bought out by another larger company that I won't name, but primarily uses red, white, and blue on its gas stations. And then they decided that they wanted us for the assets, not for the employees, and laid us all off. And so I went and looked. I was unemployed for about eight months, and I had been talking with my dad. I said, hey, dad. I'm not sure that the oil and gas industry is right for me to begin with. And this was a conversation I've been having for years back. You know, it wasn't just when I got laid off. And finally, an opportunity to join an architectural firm came along. And I said, well, what the heck? I can at least just try an interview. It's not like they can say no to an interview, although they can. Uh, and I went and interviewed and they said, well, hey, you have no prior education, no prior training. No qualifications to be a plumbing designer. What, what is going to make us want to hire you? 
And I said, well, to be honest, I completely agree. I don't have any education, training, or prior qualifications for this, but I love to learn, and I can work really hard, and I promise you that you won't regret it. And they actually bought it. <laughs> so now I've been a plumbing designer for two and a half years, something like that, yeah. So life is pretty good. So uh, this question is about the committee itself. Uh, what interactions does the internet committee have with other committees of the Grand Council? So to be honest, I don't uh, think we, we quite have the interaction that I would prefer to have. Uh, I would love to be able to put information up for each of the different committees, uh, especially history and preservation. I feel like there's a lot of valuable, great information that the history and preservation committee uh, could be contributing to the website. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, I, I would say, honestly, the only committee that we work with on a somewhat regular basis is the Committee on Work, uh, as we work with them to put up the um, esoteric certificates uh, and some other information as well. The, the, uh, the companions that have received their lifetime certificates are also on there. Um, really, most of who we work with will be the, uh, yeah, Don Paul, uh, as most illustrious grandmaster, uh, you know, he, he provides a lot of direction for the work we have. And then also the grand recorder in his office, uh, we interact with them quite a bit. Uh, so sometimes it's, uh, can you add this information? And sometimes it's, can you take this information down because we really don't want it up there. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's all part of a growth process as well, because one of the things that we're doing is, it, you know, this is still, you know, we're still halfway through year one of both of us being on the committee officially. And we're working, you know, we're starting to encourage folks, hey, like if you have something for us, let us know. And so we're getting everybody used to this new system where, hey, you can just email the grand recorder or email the grand, the internet committee and they can add something to the calendar. Or, hey, you can tell somebody, hey, I know for a fact that this piece of the bio of so-and-so grandmaster, it should actually read this way. Uh, so it's kind of a new paradigm where we're talking about increased communication and increased availability for communication and collaboration, right? So in time, my hope is that we are interacting with all the committees of, you know, the, of the grand chapter and the grand council to say, hey, listen, if you need a, a sub page on the, on the website, we can do that. If you need to announce your event, we can do that. Uh, you know, I don't know that it would be possible or, or desirable, but you know, theoretically my goal would, as a member would be to, to get to a point where if say, for example, the guys from the Divine Memorial Service said, hey, we want to live stream this, then we can figure out a way to make it happen. Just you know, not saying that that would happen or that it wouldn't, but the goal would be to say, hey, we, we want to make this as functional as possible to provide the most media that people want and that we can provide. Thanks, Gabe. That actually leads right into my next question. So I want to ask you, Gabe, to start off on this one. Uh, do you envision a different role for the Internet Committee in the coming years? I think that we will see a lot more emphasis on interactive media. Uh, right now, the member of the internet committee that handles social media is Brian Cook, uh, and he's doing a pretty good job of it. And he, he's handling this back and forth with uh, ordinary companions who want to get information or who want to provide information and use the grand chapter or the grand council as a network for providing that information. So right now we're acting as an informational relay and it's simple stuff right now, right? It's, hey, who has an esoteric certificate? Hey, what are the events going on and how can I add them to my Google calendar? Or, hey, this is a, um, a promotional video that the grand high priest does. You know? So most excellent David does this thing where every quarter he uploads a video and we put it on the website and it's a message from the grand high priest. Um, and it's, we're starting, it's baby steps, right? Where we're providing information and we're doing some entry level uh, data relay, basically. Uh, the goal then would be, hey, listen, you know, if you want to organize an educational seminar, 
then we'll, we'll help you find out how to do that on Zoom, right? Or another streaming platform, as it were. Um, we can, you know, or maybe provide YouTube videos that have educational content or just promotional content, that kind of thing. Uh, or live streaming type stuff, right? So beyond just a Zoom conference call, beyond a pre-recorded YouTube video, but also, you know, kind of something where, uh, you know, going back to the example of the divine memorial service, for example, right? Like, because I'm, and that is, that's inspired by my experience with uh, attending church digi digitally lately. So something like that would be really cool to do. Billy, anything to add? Uh, no, I mean, Gabe does a, a great job covering that. I, I think I would love to see at some point in the future uh, having maybe digital town halls that we help to set up, uh, especially right now, right? Um, you know, we've had to cancel a couple of the rallies and grand council conferences. Uh, this would be a great time to be able to put together like a large town hall that we can have with companions across Texas uh, to where they can talk directly with you know, Don Paul or or David, uh, and get some kind of direction or, or maybe even just touch base and, and keep in contact with each other during these times. Uh, another thing I would like to see that we are available for, actually, it, it's not even something that, that needs to be changed, uh, but if your chapter or council uh, really are, if any of your bodies want to set up a social media or a website presence, you know, we are available to give advice and helpful tips about that. Uh, not necessarily build the page for you, uh, you know, because unfortunately we are pretty stacked with different web pages that we're managing now. Uh, but we absolutely will help you get a digital presence put together uh, based on what we've done uh, with the different bodies that we work with. All right, Billy. Uh, last question. I've, I've got two more. Next question. Uh, if I were a newly elected Grand Council line officer or was making myself available to run for the Grand Line, which I'm not, why should I care about the Internet Committee? So if I could jump in here, I think because when it comes down to it, whether we intend to be or not, we're pretty much your publicity arm. Um, you know, if you want statewide coverage, there's no better place to start than with the Grand Chapter and Grand Council Facebook pages. Um, it, yeah, I, I feel like we're probably the best place to start to get your, I, I don't want to say agenda, but your goals and aspirations if you want to communicate that and, and let everyone know uh, what you're about then starting with the social media and, and website is probably the first place to, to begin. Yeah, and uh, building off of that, kind of more from the perspective, uh, let's say that you're, you're running for something. Presumably when you run for an, a point, uh, for an elected office, you have some sort of vision in mind for that organization and you say, hey, by the time I get to be grand presiding officer, I will have already taken these steps and be enacting these actions to try and make something happen. Presumably, right? If, if you're running for the right reasons. Uh, so you got to know how to distribute information, right? Communication has to happen. Um, and communication only occurs when the other person understands what you're telling them. It, and they may not they may not get your point via email they might not get your point via a website announcement it may be through social interaction on facebook or through watching a youtube video that you prepared or by doing a call in on a theoretical town hall so you have to kind of bombard the populace with multiple avenues of communication most of which the internet committee can provide Right now, we're not saying that we can solve everything or that we're even there to help people run for office because we're not. But once you're elected and that you're part of the working arm of the grand chapter or the grand council, as it were, we want to work with you to build on the success of previous grand presiding officers 
and develop whatever vision you have for the state of Texas in that Masonic sense. Thanks, Gabe. Uh, Billy, you got a follow up? Yeah, actually, so I would say if you're planning to run, um, nothing replaces actually traveling, right? And, and that's the best way to get your name out there is to actually visit the chapters, councils, lodges, commanders, whatever you're running for. Um, but I would say that being a part of the internet committee is actually a pretty good way to get your name recognition out there because all of the secretaries and recorders and high priests and thrice illustrious masters that need an update, you know, they're going to reach out to you. So I'm not throwing this pitch out there to necessarily get volunteers, but if you're interested in volunteering, it is a good way to, to uh, get some kind of name recognition because, um, you know, you are that communication nexus for the state. Thanks, Billy. I've got one last question, then I'm going to turn it over to Chance. Uh, we've heard a lot of hypotheticals about the committee, about where we'd like to see it go. Uh, you guys just rolled out the, the new website here not long ago. So what's next? Not hypothetically what's next, but what can we expect next from your committee, Billy? Next from our committee, um, I would love to see, and, and this is something that, that I've been proposing, but I know it, it's got to run by the, you know, the, the Grand Master and the Grand Recorder, is I would love to see a ebook store available on the website, right? To where if you need the laws and constitutions of the Grand Council of Texas, uh, you can purchase it and have it available in a digital format. Something that makes it easy to search for in PDF format. Um, I would love to have that up there uh, as well as, you know, anything that we currently sell, I would love to see a digital version for it. So if you ask what's next, um, I would say a store. Um, because not only can we put publications up there, but if the Grand Master has items that he's selling for his year to, for fundraising, um, we can put that on there. We have it in a limited form today uh, with the Grand Master's Jewel. You can buy that online. Uh, I would love to see that expanded to where you can, if you can buy pins, cufflinks, you know, ties, whatever the Grand Master has or the Grand High Priest. We need a store on the website where you can easily get in touch with, you know, with that person and buy it. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of the challenge behind Billy and I have been talking about a store for both the grand chapter and grand, grand council website and through talking with the grand presiding officers and the secretary recorder and number of other guys that would have to be involved in this process. Our big challenge right now is, you know, throwing up a storefront is, super easy to do that's not a problem but then you get into the logistics of it where do we store all this stuff right because we let's be real a lot of this stuff is custom made it's not stuff that we can drop ship right so there's no drop shipping where do we store this stuff how do we do inventory and whose responsibility is inventory going to be and how do we handle the accounting side of stuff and so they it's it's a challenge and it's something that we're willing to take on as a committee, but it, there's also many aspects to starting a storefront for both bodies that is a challenge that involves a lot more than just us as the internet committee because we handle the digital side of stuff, but as soon as money starts getting touched, as soon as physical inventory starts getting touched, that becomes a different challenge entirely. So it's a cross-disciplinary adventure so to speak um but that's what we're trying to get rolling basically thanks gabe that's all the questions i've got for you two guys i'm going to pitch it over to chance chapman he's got a few questions chance thanks jim as a as he alluded to earlier with the working with other committees is there a function of some sort that the internet committee can be or has been utilized for that's beyond its typical object, uh, yeah, objectives. All right. Um, so yes, I would love to see the website used for online dues payments. Uh, to be honest, 
The only reason I have a checkbook is to pay Masonic dues. There is no other reason for me to have a checkbook at all. Yep. Uh, so I would love to see us have an online dues payment system uh, in a way that you can check your account. So instead of getting the notice in the mail, it automatically comes to your email to let you know, hey, dues are, are uh, you know, it's that time of year again. Uh, and the other thing would be the online registration for the Grand Convocation and Grand Assembly. Um, I know that the Grand Commandery has it in, has a setup for that. Uh, we could easily do something. Uh, Gabriel and I already do that right now for Texas. <laughs> we have a very easy portal to use, uh, which is, it, it's extremely streamlined. Um, I would love to, to see us start doing that on the Grand website as well. Yeah, uh, we've done registration for a number of different organizations, uh, primarily Texas Masonicon, and that's something that fortunately we have experience in. Uh, I would say as far as current things that we've done uh, as the Internet Committee that kind of go beyond the ordinary scope is uh, the Grandmasters Fund Jewel. Uh, one of the things that uh, Billy and I have been uh, heavily involved in is the marketing and sales of the Grandmasters Fund Jewels uh, to benefit the no Mason Left Behind Fund. And it's one of those things where we're doing this primarily because we, you know, we are trying to serve the Grand Council as best as we can and trying to contribute to the charity of the Grand Council, which is the Texas Masonic Retirement Center. Um, but there's been a lot of it where we have been acting in some degree of capacity as inner committee men. And so that's a little bit unusual because it does involve the actual sales and marketing for it, where, you know, the, our normal scope is, hey, we have a web page uh, on the website for this jewel, um, but then we've expanded past that, and, you know, which has been enjoyable and fun. That's awesome. So <clears throat> my other question is, how often does a website need to be updated in design and professional terms? And in a Masonic sense, how often does it need to be updated in design and in content as well? Mm. <laughs> That's a pretty good question. Um, from my opinion, you need to be, uh, you don't need to, to change, to, to reinvent the wheel every time, right? But anytime that, you know, you have new officers, anytime that critical information involving contact information gets changed. That's when, you know, you need to update the data. Um, as far as design goes, we are kind of at the whim of the grand presiding officer, as it were. If he wants to see, if the next guy wants to see something totally different and we'd like to stay on the committee, then we'll design him totally, something totally different. Uh, but realistically, what you need to be doing with your website is every, you know, every year say, hey, am I falling in line with best practices regarding ease of use, regarding ease of reading? Is all of my information current? Is it easy to find? And then stylistically, am I out of date, right? That's kind of one of those things that, in general, Freemasonry is not known for having aesthetically up-to-date websites. This is not what we do as Masons. We like to live the GeoCities life. But it is kind of important from an optics perspective to adjust your aesthetics and the website design every once in a while, just so that when somebody that is interested in your organization comes across your website, they go, oh, cool, they're still active, they're still you know, in, so to speak, uh, these are people that I want to get involved with. Whereas, hey, sometimes if you have a website that is, looks like it's really out of date or there's no right contact information, then somebody may be turned off or they may, even if they still want to pursue it, they may not find it possible to pursue it because they may not have the right contact information. So at a minimum, reassess every year. And then anytime you get new information regarding the data that's supposed to be on the website. So I, I think really the frequency of updating and refreshing should depend on the component. Uh, your Facebook page 
you need to have new content on there at least once a week because otherwise there's no reason for people to come back to it. Uh, your calendar needs to be updated every month, right? You need to make sure that every month you have um, updated information up there, new items. Um, your website content itself, you should take a look at it every quarter, but more than likely won't need to be changed except once a year. Uh, and then the look and feel of it, you should probably look at every two or three years. Take a look at it and determine, you know, does it look dated? Uh, do we need to, you know, we haven't updated this since 1995. Is it time to, you know, put a new coat of paint on it? So I, I think it really depends on the aspect, but there should be a formal set timeline for when you take a look at the different aspects. I got another question for you, both of you. Uh, once you're, you're both really good at ritual, especially, you know, whether it be Blue Lodge, Chapter Council, Commandery, you both take good pride in it and do really, really good work. Uh, is there anything else besides the Internet Committee y'all would you'd be interested in doing or what, what do you really like to do in Masonry? I'll go ahead since Billy's pointed at me. <laughs> I'm really passionate about education and uh, about contemplative practices. So one of the things that I'd like to get more involved in as the time allows is to work on providing education uh, and helping others to provide education. So for me, um, I would love to see, I, I, I think it goes to education as, as well as, again, ritual, is uh, I, I would love to work with some of the bodies that uh, maybe are used to reading out of the book uh, to come up with uh, a, a way to provide a, a better, more solid experience for their candidates. Um, and I'm not trying to, um, well, I, I'm not trying to call out anybody in particular, uh, but I know, especially like uh, there's some of the invitational bodies that uh, they're done so infrequently that the members have no choice but to read it out of the book. Uh, I would love to work with setting maybe even just like a ritual team, if needed, that can travel and put on a degree from memory um, for that candidate. You know, I hate to say it, but I've been guilty of it myself. You know, the Knight Masons, uh, we've conferred, both Gabe and I have conferred degrees in the Knight Masons, uh, and we've had to read out of the book. You know, yep. and as I'm doing it, I feel dirty about it. Uh, it's, it's like, am I really giving the candidate a great experience here? <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, you've done it too, DP, in those invitational boxes. No, I sit there and make fun of y'all. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, one, one of the best ritual experiences I've ever had involved the worst ritual I've ever received. And it was from Don Paul, actually. <laughs> you know, we're sitting there, we're getting obligated for Night Masons, and he's obligating us, reading out of the book, and somewhere he's tripped up so bad on something, he can't get past the word. And uh, myself, Billy, and Brent, you know, we're, we're getting initiated into this, and we're bent in half laughing, and DP can't stop giggling for the life of him. <laughs> and it was one of the best ritual experiences I've ever had in my life, because right. it was a lot of fun. Uh, I would also love to, to be a part of uh, educational material, uh, helping to put it together. Um, other things that, uh, you know, I, I love writing. So one of the things I'm looking forward to is, uh, you know, the Texas Law of Research, I would say that the one meeting that I'm really depressed got canceled was the April meeting down in San Antonio. Uh, because for me, it was actually going to be kind of a family trip. My son was going to petition to become an associate member at that meeting. Uh, and then my wife had taken off. So it was truly going to be a family trip down to San Antonio to enjoy a good day of fellowship and education. Uh, so for me, actually, I, I'd love to get more involved with... Uh, with research bodies like that. Well, Billy, why don't you go ahead and give us the quote of the week? All right, yeah, the quote of the week, actually, uh, I was looking around and I found this and it seemed particularly apt to our time and uh, this podcast. 
Uh, so the quote is, the fraternity must present the principles it was founded upon in a way that is palpable and able to be understood and valued by a new generation. Never are Masonic principles needed more than in times of turmoil and never have humans lived in a more tumultuous time. Technology is changing every day. And that was a comment from Brother Michael Savage in the September, October 2017 issue of the California Freemason Magazine. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty interesting, especially uh, what's going on right now in the world with the virus and all that stuff. So, uh, pretty I want to, the one now? Pretty pressing. Yes. Well, I want to remind everybody, if you have any questions or any comments, anything like that, feel free to email us at chat, C-H-A-T, at yourcryotexas.org and send us any questions or anything you have you would like for us to ask any of our guests. Uh, in this coming week, we will have a special guest, uh, the, the most worshipful grandmaster of Masons in Texas, Paul D. Underwood, will be our guest. So uh, if you have any questions you would like, uh, for him to be asked, be sure to send it to chat at yourcrattexas.org and uh, we'll see if we can get to him. So, uh, Gabe and Billy, I want to appreciate everything that each one of you do for me in particularly and, uh, of course, the, the Masonic fraternity, whether it be uh, Blue Lodge, Chapter Council, Commandery, you guys right there stay busy and uh, have a, a big commitment and as I always say, uh, if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be able to do the uh, cryptic conferences this year. Wouldn't have a great website. Wouldn't be able to, because I can't do all that things, all those things. I surround myself with people that know what they're doing. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate everything you do. DP's being modest. He's really a super hacker. <laughs> <laughs> that I am not, I guarantee you. Well, DP, it's an honor and a pleasure to get involved in, so thanks for the opportunity. Hey, I see your blanket there at Masonic Home and School of Texas. Oh, yeah. It's a, a throw blanket that I found on eBay. It's even got uh, all the all the buildings on it and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, somewhere on here, there's even the cafeteria. I think this is it. it yep. is, this is on our Grandmaster's Coin this year, because that's where he and his friends used to eat when he was growing up. So... Hey, Jim, I got a quick question for you. As you said earlier about the Committee on Work and the Zoom where you can have ritual practice, when when can people do that? I mean, just at any time or? Anytime. Yeah, this is a individual practice from individual masons or individual lodges. Uh, the key there is to keep the Zoom meeting secure. Uh, but yeah, knock yourselves out, guys. Cool. Awesome. Well, good to see you guys. Y'all enjoy your yep. Sunday and uh, look forward to this week having another guest. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. And Thank uh, you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.